right now, with geopolitical conflicts and actual wars raging across the whole world, as federal money printing is leading to inflation that's completely eating away the purchasing power of our money, as central banks around the world are in the process of implementing digital currencies, well, the end result is that the price of gold has skyrocketed and it's reached all-time record highs. And so in order to get an insider's look at the industry, what the demand and supply are looking like behind the scenes, as well as some possible scenarios for what the price of gold might be in the near future, I sat down and spoke with Mr. Max Baker. He's the president of American Hartford Gold, which is my own personal gold and silver dealer, as well as a long-term supporter of the show. All right, Max, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, to start with, you know, for the past week, uh, I've been very satisfied <laughs> uh, owning gold. The price has been surging. I just checked this morning. It, uh, it's north of 2400 right now. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe to start with, what's leading to the spike in the, in the price of gold? Well, it's got a lot of drivers right now, um, mainly central bank buying. Uh, they're buying at a fast, the fastest clip in 55 years. Uh, obviously, war uh, with what's going on uh, with Israel and Iran at the moment. Um, that's a very volatile situation, and gold being a safe haven, it's it's uh, benefiting from that. Uh, and then money printing. Uh, we're printing we're printing an awful lot of money right now, and and gold is a hedge against that. It's it's a hedge against the devaluing dollar, um, and we're seeing inflation figures come out. And inflation is actually accelerating uh, after the last CPI. And with that, uh, uh, folks are, are taking notice and, and moving into a safe haven that, that's a hedge for that. Mm. Uh, you, you mentioned war. Can, can you give uh, the viewers a bit of a, like a concrete understanding of how war affects the price of gold specifically? Sure. So, you know, you, you buy gold for, for what you don't know, not what you know. And uh, we are kind of in the great unknown. This is uncharted territory with what we're seeing with two major wars going on uh, between Ukraine and Russia. And, and now you've got uh, Israel and Iran. Those are two pretty big uh, powers with, with massive militaries, and they're very unpredictable. So it's, it's one of those things where people are, are taking refuge and, and something that, um, you know, they, that has proven to be an insurance policy. So um, again, it's, it's just something we haven't experienced. We don't know where we go from here. Maybe it de-escalates, but maybe it doesn't. And, and maybe, you know, a whole lot of allies get involved and it turns into something uh, pretty major. So there's people just kind of taking risk off the table and moving into something that they feel we can hide out here. And then when we know more, then we can possibly move out of it. Mm. Let me, let me ask you this. So you mentioned the, the two different conflicts, the one in Eastern Europe and, and the Middle East. So I, I know that when the Ukraine-Russia war kicked off, the price of gold spiked and it uh, reached it breached 2000 for the first time. Um, and then it sort of stabilized there. And that war, of course, didn't end, but it, it, it sort of stabilized there. And then sure. when this conflict in the Middle East kicked off, it, it jumped again to now it's like 23, 2400. Is it the case that if those conflicts dissipate, you know, in, in, in one way or the other, they go away, will the price of gold sort of dip back below to pre-war levels or will it find a new equilibrium because of all the other factors that you mentioned, like inflation and, um, and uh, central bank purchasing and uh, money printing? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And um, because there's so many drivers for the gold price, gold is going to remain very buoyant. Um, gold has had a very impressive run since October, as has the stock market. And whenever the stock market uh, runs upward, you know, the, gold should have an inverse relationship with it. Gold should pull back, you know, pretty significantly. Gold uh, stock market's been ripping since the fall, since September. Uh, the dollar is near highs against other currencies. When those two things are happen, gold, happening, gold should pull back. You know, we should see gold at you know 16, 1500, and that didn't happen. It's been remarkably resilient because of the central bank buying, because of the amount of money that we're printing, and war is just kind of you know adding that extra little boost. So if war goes away, we still very much have the central bank buying, and we still very much have inflation, and we still very much have money printing that are going to maintain that price. Yeah. Well, it's funny you mentioned the stock market because. It's like, yeah, it is. It's also rising, but the stock market rise is heavily weighted on like a handful of uh, tech companies, right? So it's, yes, like, it's yes. like, yeah, it's, it's rising, but then you, you might say, well, then why is gold rising? And I would posit that it's almost 
a bit independent of each other because like, okay, you do have a few tech companies, NVIDIA, uh, Apple, like, like a, few, a few of them on the upward trajectory sure. and they're sort of carrying the whole market with them. But then the gold That's price, right. it almost seems to be a reflection of the weakening dollar uh, independent of the, of the stock price, stock market as a whole, because I- Yes. Right, do, do you agree with that? You, you just described it perfectly. Um, in the past, we've seen the market and gold have an inverse relationship, but where we stand right now because of what's going on with the dollar and inflation, um, they are very independent. So they can continue to rise together. Um, and, and you're right about the, the stock market. Like I'm, I'm not a stock expert or a financial advisor, but uh, it seems to be pretty fragile with uh, the entire success of the market hinging on, on a few companies. Being actually in the industry, what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing uh, a lot of buying, a lot of selling? or uh, And also when it hit that 2400 mark or that $2,300 mark, uh, did buying slow down where people are like a little bit like, oh, it's a little bit too hot, let me sell? Like, what are you seeing on the back end? You know, we're seeing a lot of buying right now. Um, yes, it is at all time highs, uh, but there's projections coming out. You know, you had UBS uh, just this past week call for gold to 4,000 an ounce. You have Citibank uh, and Bank of America calling for $3,000 an ounce. And a lot of this is like from, from 2000 till now, we've had a, an awful lot of money being printed. The M2 money supply has gone up exponentially. And we're just now starting to see gold in the first, second, third inning of the rally. So we're not getting a lot of people selling because they see the writing on the wall with all the money printing. I would tell you right now that, you know, if Washington came out tomorrow and said, hey, you know what, we're going to get this budget in check and we're not going to print any more money and, and we're really going to settle down and, and tighten the bootstraps, I would say, hey, you know what, you should probably uh, sell some gold, take some profit right here. But Washington's not saying that. Washington's right. saying, let's print trillions more dollars. The debt is going up another trillion dollars every hundred days. Yeah. Every hundred days, another trillion dollars. And so people are seeing that writing on the wall. And it, it used to be just kind of a, a safe haven hedge in case something happens. And now it, it, you're seeing a real shift into people putting money into gold as more of a currency than anything else. You're seeing that shift of, I need to have gold as, as my stable currency. I don't know what's going to happen with the dollar. We're printing trillions of dollars. You know, Biden's new plan is a $7 trillion plan. Bank of America came out, I believe it was three weeks ago, their chief strategist and said, if we don't get this money printing under control, the dollar will crash. You know, and, and we're talking about what the first or, or second largest bank in the world, their chief strategist saying the dollar will crash unless we, we get our spending under control. And literally a week later, uh, Joe Biden came out with a $7 trillion spending plan. Mm. So, you know, it's uh, people are starting to understand that and grasp just how much money is printed over the past four years. And um, they're losing they're losing faith in, in fiat current currency a bit. And uh, so with that, uh, I, I believe we're, we're still very much in the second, third inning, second inning of this rally. Um, and, 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 you know, don't leave before the miracle. So you got a lot of people holding on, holding on tight to their gold. Oh, interesting. You know, when, when you were describing that, it just made me th think of the fact that like, like if you look at uh, the Forex, for instance, sometimes you, you think, oh, actually the dollar is doing, you know, really strongly right now, but that's, it's mm -hmm. doing strongly compared to other currencies that are also just fiat currencies, you know, across the world. It's like strong compared to those currencies, but gold almost seems like right. it's, a, it's like a, it's like a reality check. It's like, well, you think you're doing well that's against right. the Euro, against the yen. Sure. They're not tethered to anything. You're doing well against these hot air balloons all going up at once, you know, not, not, not tethered to the ground, but against an actual yeah. hard currency like gold, <laughs> it's not doing well. And it seems like it's a reflection of that. So you're basically saying, unless there's a, there's the will in Congress uh, slash the White House to actually curb some mm. of the spending and, and actually become fiscally responsible, there's no other path for gold other than up, right? Uh, gold, gold is up, uh, I believe it was Mark Mobius, uh, you know, famous investor, billionaire who, who coined it, but he said that, you know, gold's going up, up and up because the money supply is going up, up and up. And that, that's just the way that it works. And so if you look at things as a whole, you know, every nation out there, we're just going to keep printing and, you know, Congress, Washington, they can't stop printing uh, because they want to get reelected. And when you start cutting programs and start cutting costs, people don't like that. 
and and we've gotten very much people addicted to uh, some of these programs and some of these handouts. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. You know, one thing that might really happen in the near future is that the Fed uh, might cut rates. I mean, you know, we see these jobs reports and these different economic uh, indicators coming out. And you know, sure. it, it's not it's not unreasonable to assume that uh, they, they will cut rates uh, soon. You know, nobody knows yes, when, when it'll absolutely. happen, but they might do it soon. I've seen uh, analysts describe what will happen to housing prices if that were to happen. If rates go back down to 5 4 even 3%, uh, likely sure. it, the cost of housing will uh, you know, skyrocket. Let, let's say like a $800,000 right. house might go up to like 1.1 million uh, you know, in the right. matter of a few months. Um, if, that, That's right. if the Fed were to cut rates, how would it affect the price of gold? Uh, great question. So Fed kind of has its back up against the wall right now. Um, you know, they can... Uh, uh, cut interest rates and let inflation run wild, um, or they can maintain interest rates or even raise interest rates. You know, UBS was talking about we might have six and a half percent rates by next year, which would lead to a pretty hard landing, uh, you know, to get uh, inflation under control. So the Fed either has to, uh, uh, you know, maintain rates or raise rates to get un inflation under control, um, or, or, you know, risk sending us into a, re a recession. Um, or they can cut interest rates and um, save us from, from a recession. So that's kind of a back up against the wall uh, scenario there. Um, gold will very much benefit from, from rate cuts because the dollar, you know, the DXY will certainly fall uh, when they start cutting interest rates. And when that happens, we'll see gold rise. We saw gold uh, rise significantly when the dollar fell from 90 to 70 from 08 to 2011. Uh, you know, gold skyrocketed. Went from uh, 700 to 1900. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see more of the same this time around if we get into a big cutting cycle, because again, the dollar will fall. That inverse relationship, gold will rise. Yeah, I, uh, I, I look back at that period of time and I think I should have been buying gold, but I, I was too busy being in, a, in high in high school at the time. <laughs> at the time, sure, uh, <laughs> right, right, same year. Um, so let me ask you this. So, so you mentioned a few different reports, like the Citigroup. Uh, report that said uh, within the next, I believe their their analysis was like within the, within the next 18 months they expect it to be like 3k an ounce, $3,000 an ounce. Um, let me sure. Let me let me get your perspective. Uh, you know, being on the inside and you obviously have your your finger on the pulse of the market. Can you give us um, sort of three predictions, like a bearish prediction, uh, like a neutral prediction, mm -hmm. and a bullish prediction on the price of gold, and like what what factors would lead to those those different uh, scenarios? Sure. So, you know, first one would be uh, a bearish. I, I would say uh, bearish would be uh, they cut rates maybe a quarter percent and nothing really happens and gold kind of maintains where it's at. You know, we're at 2,400, 2,300 neighborhood. Um, I think a neutral a path uh, uh, would be that this war escalates. Central banks continue to uh, uh, buy at the clip that they're buying at right now. Inflation uh, remains hot. Um, and, and with that, you're going to see gold around 2,700. Um, if Washington continu continues to print the way that we're printing, um, if war continues, if you know a digital dollar is launched at any time in the next couple of years, um, really it comes down to, again, war, central bank buying, money printing, inflation, digital dollar, those factors you know, come to play. We're looking at $3,500 to $4,000 an ounce gold, no problem. Mm. Um, really, gold didn't do much from you know, 2002 to, to 2003, and you're seeing all this money being printed. I remember looking at the charts just asking, why, why isn't gold really moving yet? Mm. And now it's starting to show that resilience regardless of what's happening uh, with the dollar, regardless of what's happening in the stock market. And it's because of the money printed and, and the cat's out of the bag right now. Um, and so gold has just started its rally. And, and I think we're going to see a, a, a bull market for many years to come. Wow. So, so I was actually surprised by your answer. So you were saying even like your most bearish, like most conservative estimate is that it'll maintain yeah. its current price over the next year plus. So you're, you're basically saying that there's enough it, it, demand from central banks and from the private sector to, yes. to maintain it right now where it's at. So the, so the, the question between oh, neutral yeah. and we, bullish we're, we're, is just up. Like, is it gonna go this up or, or this up? There, there's just too many factors that are working in its favor to send it up mm. and nothing working against it right now that it's creating a very solid foundation, a very solid floor where it's at. Mm. 
Well, that's fascinating. Um, let me let me ask you this. So besides, we've obviously centered the discussion on gold. Uh, what, what about silver right now? What, what's your opinion on on the price of silver relative to the price of gold? Yeah, silver is 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 pretty volatile as a metal because it's got a couple. It's got industrial, uh, and then obviously it has you know some some currency applications to it as well. Silver hasn't had its big rally yet. Uh, it has. It is up, I believe, thirty three percent since October. Um, but it's it's still very undervalued from where I believe it should be. Uh, it does act later. It's kind of later to the party than gold is. Uh, but you will see some big moves in silver. Um, you know, we saw the same thing again from 08 to 11. You know, silver was, uh, I believe, flo flo floating around $10 and then it ran up to $49. Um, we could have another major move like that where it starts moving, you know, two, three dollars at a time. Um, so it is tremendously undervalued right now. It hasn't quite caught up to gold of, of where it should be, the gold to silver ratio. Um, uh, but uh, it's got a lot of room to run still. Mm. Can you actually say, so that was my next question. Can you sort of explain to the viewers who don't know, what is the gold silver ratio? Uh, what has it been historically? And what is it now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, historically, you know, gold to silver is, is how many ounces of silver does it take to buy one ounce of gold? And historically, it's a 16 to one ratio. And the past couple of years, we've flowed anyway, anywhere from a 70 to one ratio to a 90 to one ratio. So it, it, it's a little out of whack at the moment. Mm -hmm. And the 16 to one, that, uh, like that, that's from my limited understanding, that's like a long, long time. Like that's a very long term ratio right? that goes back like- Correct. Like thousands uh, yeah. of years. Yeah, very long. Yes, yes, very long historic look. Um, I don't anticipate we'll ever be back hmm. to, to that point, but certainly getting more in line to like a 40 to one, 50 to one will be super beneficial for silver. And I think, oh. it, it, you know, it is getting harder and harder to mine to pull it out of the ground, getting more and more expensive to mine. Um, and silver will be the probably the biggest benefactor uh, of any kind of rate cut. Um, because you're going to see that dollar pull back uh, significantly. And when that dollar pulls back on the DXY, uh, silver, you know, is, is kind of like, you know, keeping a, uh, a balloon underwater. You're going to see it, uh, or a beach ball underwater. You're going to see it shoot, shoot up pretty quick. Mm. You, you, know, you know, in regards to silver, I was thinking about it recently because uh, I personally have been stacking a lot of silver uh, like over the last, yeah. I guess, eight years now. And I was, I was debating uh, in the last like week, about whether I should uh, like increase my position in silver or gold. And then I was, my concern about silver was that uh, a lot of companies right now are pulling back from the EV uh, craze, I guess you can call it, that, that's, sure. that's been like, uh, uh -huh. you know, building up over the last year. You know, um, Hertz is a great example. They went all in on the EVs. And, yeah. and then recently they had to sell them all because there was just no demand, no interest in them. They were creating a ton of problems. Right. And same thing with manufacturers. They're, they're yeah. pulling back on that production. If that trend continues and there's less um, EV, uh, you know, interest in EVs or even like there's a less interest in like renewable mm -hmm. energies uh, that require more batteries and, and more silver, um, will that sure. sort of like uh, kneecap the support or like what's your opinion? Or is that independent of like uh, of the precious metal side? Yeah, so you know that that's a really good question. There, um, it certainly doesn't help if if they're using less and less of it. But we use it in so so many different kind of consumer electronics, not just EVs. Um, and there are there is going to be a major shortage of silver uh, because again, it, it is getting harder and harder to mine. It's getting more expensive to find find new mines. Um, and if you read some of these ports, uh, some of these reports coming out of uh, the mining companies, they're talking about, hey, just scouting and finding new mines to find silver is getting harder and harder. We're, we don't have any new big supplies uh, uh, coming or, or that we see in the foreseeable future. And um, again, pulling it out of the ground is getting more and more expensive. And then when you, mar you know, put in there the, the precious metal aspect of it and then what's going on with the dollar, interest rates, money printing, uh, there may be a couple negatives against silver, but I, I believe there's four or five positives for it that'll uh, maintain where it's at and then uh, even help it grow in price. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got to say, you know, I think you've had me on two or three times now uh, over the past couple of years, and uh, I feel really smart <laughs> because we've been talking about gold and silver and like obviously I sell gold and silver. Uh, so not to be disingenuous, but we were talking about gold and silver when it was at 1500, 1600. Mm -hmm. And now it's at 2,400, and and uh, we've been talking about it over the years, 
And, um, you know, some of our price predictions and some of, you know, the things that we've talked about that could happen have very much happened. And, um, you know, it's it's it feels nice to be right. So I guess we can kind of pat ourselves on the back a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say our last interview was at the end of last year. I think it was in December uh, of 2023. And you're and I, I, I asked you, you know, what's your prediction? Uh, I think for the next quarter, I, I forgot the time frame, but you said like, you know, I, I foresee yeah. it being like 22, 2300. Uh, and, and here and here sure. we are in April yeah. and, and it's at 2400. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, indeed quite, you know, quite a good track record. Mm-hmm.